Welcome to Allen High School's discussion of thermochemistry with a little thermodynamics. Uh, we are about to begin that point when I'm going to flip things up on you. I saw this little sign. It says there's an existential threat. We have worked so hard to help you see that a delta is final minus initial. And lo and behold, because of the way bond energies are reported, we are going to see a situation where that is not the case. So let's dive in. First off, we're going to now focus in on enthalpy for a little while. We've really covered entropy, enthalpy, free energy as a little trio. And now we want to zero in on some of the specifics of measuring enthalpy. This is, you know, typically what people call thermochemistry as opposed to the thermodynamics, which includes uh, the entropy and the free energy aspect of it. So this is section 8.8 in your book. I know I jump around a bit, but it just makes sense to me to bring together all of these discussions of energetics under one umbrella of a unit. So what we're going to see in bond energy is that we can estimate, and, and this is very, very important. What we're going to be calculating right now is an estimate of reactions. And the reason it's an estimate is because we're going to be using tables of bond energy values that assume that all bonds are created equal. Uh, let's take a look at this example above here. In this example, I have methane. Let's just start with the methane for a second. Methane has four bonds to hydrogen. So the first thing that these tables assume is that each one of these CH bonds would, remember if we're going to break, we require energy would require the same amount of energy to be broken. So if I wanted to break that bond, breaking the first one is thought to be, or not thought to be, assumed to be equivalent as breaking the second and the third and the fourth. And that is not likely the case. Now, additionally, these tables assume that the bond energies are going to be the same regardless of what else is on this substance here. What if one of these is a fluorine? We know that fluorine draws electron density towards itself. So it is possible that these bonds are being weakened as fluorine draws electron density towards itself. But the tables of bond energies assume that all of these, <laughs> Let me get us some space here. All of these CH bonds are identical, period, uh, regardless of what order we're taking them off and regardless of what else is on the molecule. Now let's look over here. We have a CH bond right here. The tables assume that the energy required to break that bond is the same as the energy required to break the bond over here. Well, hopefully you know by now that like fluorine, oxygen just loves to suck electron density away. And so it's very likely that this bond is weakened because of it. And so indeed that CH bond is not necessarily going to be the same as that CH bond. But in this model, because we are after simply an estimate of the reaction energy, because of that, we're going to assume that those are all created equal, all right? Now, when we do the homework, you will either be looking in your notes for the appropriate data, in the, in the book, excuse me, for the appropriate data, or if I take problems from other books, I will give you those values. Now, here's the caveat here. Here's where we, you know, kind of hit the ball in the rough, so to speak. The reason we have to take initial minus final is because the values are always listed as positive endothermic, the amount of energy required to break a bond. Now, an overall reaction is looking at kind of a 
teeter-totter balance, if you will, of breaking versus forming. So if it takes more energy to break bonds than it takes to for, reform the bond that is released, right, because energy is released when bonds formed, if it takes more energy to break the bonds than it does to form it, we're going to have a net endothermic process. And we can say then that our reactants were stronger, the bond energies were stronger. Now, if on the other hand, we come across a situation where that teeter-totter so leans in the other direction, so let's take a look here. If on the other hand, more energy is released upon forming than is required to break, then we're gonna end up with a net exothermic process. And we would say in that situation that the bond strengths of the products are overall stronger, okay? Now, since it is reported that way, we always take the bonds broken, which is what we're going to do to reactants, minus the bonds formed, which is what we will do as products. Now, a lot of you can look at the structures and you won't have to do what I'm about to do, but I tend to break everything, reform everything, and then cancel out duplicates. Otherwise, I tend to miss things. You know, I might miss a bond here and there if I don't do that. The other thing I tend to do is draw, draw, draw the structure. So let's see a couple of examples. Predict, or another word might be estimate would give us a ballpark figure in the lab if we wanted to work with this, this experiment. The enthalpy change for the following. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw these. I'm going to draw methane. Diatomic chlorine is a single bond. And then this is chloromethane. Doesn't matter where you put the chlorine. H and H. And then I have an H and a CL, all right? So I'm going to see how much energy it's gonna take for me to blast everything apart, and then I'm going to see how much payback I'm gonna get when I reform it. And what we wanna see is, are we gonna make some money net? In other words, are we gonna get some energy out? Is it going to be exothermic? So this is like, how much money am I gonna to have to invest in my process how much money am I going to make in my process? And the goal is to find out what the net is. So in this case, I have to break four CH bonds, one CLCL bond, and I'm going to subtract, remember it's the one time, the only time we do reactants minus products, three CH bonds, one CCL bond, and one HCL bond. Now, you don't have to do any canceling if you don't want to. You can just plug in the numbers right now. You get them off the chart, plug them in, you're good to go. Uh, I, I tend to do a little bit of ca uh, canceling. I don't know why, it just seems to make my life a little simpler. Uh, if you want to go through, you can kind of do a little quick check mark. Okay, I got all four of those. Yes, I've got that bond and so forth. Just do a check mark to make sure you didn't forget a bond here and there. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of canceling. I have three CH bonds here and I have four here. So instead of four, I can make that one CH bond, right? Four CH minus three CH leaves me one CH bond. And now when I plug in those values from the table and be very careful what you're looking up because for example, a C double bond, C bond, double bonded C's, that's not the same energy as a triple bond or a single bond. So be very careful when you're looking these up on the tables. And when I plug those values in, this is 413, this C, CL bond, 
CLCL bond is 239, and I only have one of them. Minus, I've canceled that, I have one CCL bond, and that is 339, and then I have the one HCL bond, which is 427. I just picked up these data. These are on the t in the table in your book, uh, table 84 and 85 in your book. We're picking up a little section back in chapter 8, and or I will give you tables if you need them from another book. And if you do this mathematics, you should get minus 114 kilojoules is what I'm calculating, and I know somebody's going to catch an algebra problem if I have it. So we overall netted some energy out of that, um, and that means that more energy was released in forming these bonds than was required to break. That means they're stronger bonds. They're releasing a lot of energy when they form. Strong attractions release a lot of energy. Okay, remember, broken requires forming releases. It's a really key piece of information that you need there. Okay, I'm gonna do one more quick one for you and then we will end this video. I've got this molecule here and my CLCL. I'm gonna show you how you name something like this. F means two carbons. So I'm going to put two carbons down. Ene tells me it's a double bond. 2-chloro, dichloro, that means I have two Cl groups, one on the first carbon, one on the second carbon. Now, carbons have to have four bonds, so it's assumed that these are hydrogens, right? And if I break these apart, I would get two CH bonds, one C triple bond, and one CLCL bond minus, again, two CH bonds. Like I said, I really, this has kept me from missing bonds. So if you don't need it, more power to you. And then the two CCL bonds. All right, these cancel. And then I'm going to plug in the values that we had, I looked these up online, so hopefully they're very close to what's in your book. 239, this is 614, this is 339, and if you crank through that algebra, I did a double check, and I did indeed get minus 214 kilojoules. All right, we're going to continue our focus on enthalpy in our next set of videos. Until then, this is signing off.